It's been about five months uh, since we heard of COVID-19 and we've yet to grasp the full picture of the virus. As Singapore's Chief Health Scientist, Professor Tan Tho Tuan said, to fight a war, you must know your enemy. Scientists are still learning more about the coronavirus so that treatments and vaccines can be developed to get it under control. The Straits Times Science and Environment correspondent Audrey Tan joins us now to talk about what's known so far about COVID-19. Audrey, scientists all around the world are racing to find a treatment to this silent killer. What are some of these therapeutics that countries are working on to combat COVID-19? So yeah, therapeutics is the branch of medicine that looks at how to treat or alleviate a particular disease, in this case COVID-19. And there are three main uh, types of therapeutics that scientists are studying now. So the first one would be antiviral medication. The second one is ant antibody therapy. And the last one would be a vaccine. So all of them work in different ways. And I'll try to explain mm. how each of them works. Uh, for antiviral mm. medication, um, we have seen trials like remdesivir, which is originally an Ebola drug being used to treat COVID patients now and in some countries. And how that works is that it, it targets the virus from replicating in the human body. So can you Im imagine like a missile antiviral drug aims to target the virus and like get rid of it. Mm -hmm. uh, antibody therapy is slightly different. So I think as many of us know, antibodies are part of the immune system. Antibody mm -hmm. therapy um, essentially makes use of uh, labor laboratory manufactured um, antibodies and you inject that into the patients uh, in hopes that that would kickstart the immune process. Uh, and the last one, vaccines, is uh, when you take an inactivated or a less infectious form of the virus, you put it in the patient's body and then you hope the immune system responds to mount a protective response. So all of these are still um, in the works. Uh, there's no one drug that has been developed that specifically targets COVID-19. Uh, but as I mentioned earlier now, they are using existing drugs to try to treat uh, patients. All right. So all these are still in the works right now. There are new trials ongoing. Mm. Well, we know that COVID-19 is not only a health crisis that has affected the medical community, but also the public policy decision-making process. So the virus is new and the information we have is constantly changing. And that has led to U-turns in public health policy, hasn't it? I mean, we have seen it right here, Audrey. Yes, yeah, so I think many people would um, point to the mask policy as a kind of U-turn. But I would just like to stress that, you know, um, this virus is, is very new. Uh, before it even started infecting people, I mean, we first heard of it five months ago when it started mm. uh, surfacing at a wildlife market in China. So it is very different from other kinds of viruses um, that, that people know so far. So I wouldn't, I, I think it's, it's not unexpected that um, new knowledge is co constantly being uncovered. So for example, the mask issue in the early stages of the outbreak, Scientists weren't sure whether asymptomatic patients, which means patients who don't show any symptoms, could spread mm. the virus. But as things progress, um, and multiple groups of scientists continue looking at the issue, they realize that, oh, actually, asymptomatic patients are more than expected. And that was when the government decided to ask everyone to, to wear masks when they leave their homes. So I think, I, just, I also just like to say that, you know, scientific inquiry is a, is a marathon, it's not a race. Um, when, you took, when you look at like public health policy, there are very specific milestones that we can highlight, right? Um, so when COVID-19 was declared a pandemic, when our circuit breaker start, when it's supposed to end. But in, in scientific progress, yeah, it's not so clear cut like, oh, today we discover this and another day we discover something else. Because everything is incremental. You build on yeah. knowledge. One research group builds on the knowledge that another research group found. And you cannot make decisions just based on one scientific paper that, that comes out. I mean, as we have seen during this pandemic, as the disease spreads, you also see the spread of fake news about unproven cures, and there's also unreliable signs. So things, I mean, this, this impacts human life. So I think we have to understand that, yeah. that science is constantly, um, scientific knowledge is constantly being added to you know, pe what people know about it now. All right, that's a good point that you brought up, Audrey. Now, Audrey, on that note, what can then we learn? What can we then learn uh, from this pandemic, say in terms of shaping public health policy moving forward? Yeah, so um, I spoke to a couple of scientists on this, and 
moving forward for this particular pandemic, in the shorter term, we can definitely see more progress in terms of coming up with antiviral treatments or antibody treatments. Vaccines might be further off. Uh, but as one scientist said, you know, the last time a coronavirus outbreak happened was uh, when SARS broke out in 2003, that's 17 years ago. And um, if research had continued then, maybe today we would have a cure or a vaccine or like specific mm. uh, drugs, but we did not see that. So if anything, it just, it just shows that, you know, basic research into all these kind of coronaviruses and uh, international collaboration... To, international collaboration between research groups is so important. All right, that's a very good point that you brought up, Audrey, really collaboration uh, among different agencies and among different countries to combat this uh, global pandemic. Well, thank you so much, Audrey, for taking time to speak with us. We were speaking to our science and environment correspondent, Audrey Tan, on what's known so far about COVID-19 and how this pandemic has not only shaken up the medical community, but also changed public policy.